Hello everyone, welcome to Max Studies. Today we are going to learn Venturimeter, the most commonly used device in engineering as well as physics and also it is widely used in medical applications. We will clear the basic concept about Venturimeter in this video. We'll talk about the different parts, working philosophy, applications. This is a typical 3D view of one Venturimeter. Look at this. So all around view. This is the side view. The Venturimeter is connected with two flanges so that it can be connected to pipes. Look at the flow of liquid in a Venturimeter. This is the closer view of this device. It looks like this. If we take a sectional view, see how it looks. Here fluid is flowing through the Venturimeter with its different sections. See the fluid velocity is different in different sections. We will talk about all the details here. And we can define Venturimeter like this. Venturimeter is a device to measure the flow rate of fluid flowing through a pipe. Basically it measures the flow rate of liquid. Now let's look the different parts of a Venturimeter. This Venturimeter is connected to one inlet pipe through which fluid is flowing. See this is a cone type of things. And after that there is a narrow passage. And after narrow passage, there is a diverging part. And after the diverging part, there is one pipe that is the outlet pipe. So the venturimeter is connected with two pipes. One is inlet pipe and another one is outlet pipe. And see how the liquid is flowing through this venturimeter as well as this inlet and outlet pipes. Let's look the different parts. This is inlet pipe. This is outlet pipe and this one is Venturimeter. Based on the color coding you see there are three different parts. We can separate it out to understand. This is converging part. This one is throat of the Venturimeter and this one is diverging part. Let's see the basic characteristic of a converging part. This part is converging and its area is gradually decreasing. Look at this converging part and here the area is decreasing. The other end of converging part is attached to the throat of the venturimeter. This is the end and here is the throat. The converging takes place normally at 21 plus minus 2 degree angle. Here is the angle so it is 21 plus minus 2. So the range is 20 to 23. Let's talk about the basic characteristics of throat. Throat part. One side is connected to the converging part and the other side is connected to the diverging part. Here is the throat and left side is the converging part and right side is the diverging part. Throat diameter is 1 fourth to 3 fourth of the inlet pipe diameter. So this is the inlet pipe, this is throat and this one is converging portion. So the diameter of the throat is 1 fourth to 3 fourth of the inlet pipe diameter. The length of the throat part equals to its own diameter. See this length and this diameter both are same. Cross sectional area is same throughout this throat. Now we will talk about the basic characteristics of the diverging part. Diverging area, it means the area is gradually increasing. Look at this Venturimeter diagram. This is the diverging part and here area is gradually increasing. The angle of the diverging part is 5 to 7 degrees. Here is the diverging part and this is the angle it varies from 5 to 7 degrees. Low diverging angle helps to avoid the flow separations and eddies formations. To understand this, look at this diagram. This is the eddies formations or flow separations. 
so low diverging angle helps to avoid these eddies formations energy loss in converging part is recovered in diverging part liquid is coming from the inlet pipe and it enters within this converging part and it flows and after that liquid enters into the throat this portion is high velocity zone and here the velocity is very high and after the throat liquid flows through the diverging part and here also velocity is very low so this way the liquid is flowing through this venturi meter now let's talk about the working philosophy or working procedure to understand the working procedure of a venturi meter we have to know two basic terms equation of continuity and bernoulli's equation so equation of continuity let us consider a cylindrical pipe and a liquid is flowing through it with a velocity v and a is the cross sectional area of the pipe so as per equation of continuity we can write area into velocity is equal to constant so a multiply by v is equal to constant this is the portion of the pipe which don't have uniform cross section and this is the liquid which flowing through this pipe with a velocity v1 and the cross sectional area is a1 as the cross sectional area is not uniform so the area are different liquid enters with velocity v1 and left from this pipe with velocity v2 and the cross sectional area is a2 so in summary we can see in the left side velocity is v1 and area is a1 and the right side velocity is v2 and area is a2 so as per equation of continuity a1 into v1 is equal to a2 into v2 so we can generalize the formula av is equal to constant or a is equal to constant by v so basically a proportional to 1 by v it means if a increases then velocity v decreases and if a decreases then the velocity will increases in this picture as the cross sectional area a2 is less the velocity v2 will definitely high than v1 let's talk about bernoulli's equations as per bernoulli's principle we know pressure energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to constant if pressure energy is equal to p kinetic energy is equal to 1 by 2 rho v square potential energy is equal to rho g h then as per bernoulli's equations p plus half rho v square plus rho g h is equal to constant if we divide these equations by rho g then it becomes p by rho g plus v square by 2 g plus h is equal to constant now p by rho g is pressure head v square by 2 g is velocity head and h is equal to potential head it's the elevation or the height from the reference level so we can say as per bernoulli's equation pressure head plus velocity head plus potential head is equal to constant this is definitely applicable in a streamline now if the streamline or the flow is at a constant height then potential head will be constant so the variable will be pressure head and velocity head let's look at the relationship between pressure head and velocity head if pressure head increases then velocity head will be decreased and in the same way if pressure head is decreased then to balance the equations definitely the velocity head has to be increased so velocity head 
increases means the velocity must be increased so look at this venturi meter which is working a liquid is flowing through it this is the high pressure region at the inlet and this is the low pressure zone at the throat so high pressure means velocity head will be low so the velocity will be low and at the throat low pressure means velocity head will be high and the velocity also will be high let's try to learn how to derive the equations for venturi meter we have already learned equation of continuity and bernoulli's equations so with the help of these equations we will derive venturi meter equations this is a typical scheme of a venturi meter where a liquid is flowing rho is the density of the liquid we will consider two points point 1 and point 2 point 1 is at the inlet and point 2 is at the throat as the cross section is different so there will be a difference in pressure and velocity let us consider p1 is the pressure at point 1 and v1 is the velocity at point 1 p2 and v2 are the pressure and velocity at point 2 respectively uh, this is the differential pressure which can be measured by a manometer and it is h if we apply continuity equations in point 1 and point 2 then we can write a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 now we have to derive the flow rate at the outlet it means q so what will be the value of the q is equal to a2 into v2 we know the value of a2 that is the area at the outlet so we have to find out the velocity v2 so from this continuity equations we can write v1 is equal to a2 v2 by a1 so this is the equations now we have to find out the value v2 so that is why we keep it in right side so that the equation will come with v2 as per bernoulli's equations we know p by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus h is equal to constant if we apply bernoulli's equations at point 1 and 2 then it will be like p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 is equal to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus z2 here z1 and z2 are the potential head or the elevations as it is in streamline and at the same elevation we can cancel out z1 and z2 so the equation becomes p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g is equal to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g so p1 by rho g and p2 by rho g both are the pressure head and it is related to the differential pressure head so we can write the equation in different way p1 by rho g minus p2 by rho g is equal to v2 square by 2g minus v1 square by 2g here p1 by rho g minus p2 by rho g is equal to the differential pressure head so it can be written h is equal to v2 square by 2g minus v1 square by 2g or h is equal to v2 square minus v1 square by 2g now if we solve these two equations then we will get the value of v2 let's put the value of v1 in this equations and we will get the value of v2 so v2 is equal to a1 by square root of a1 square minus a2 square into root 2g so this is the outlet velocity of the liquid in the venturi meter from this outlet velocity we can calculate easily the theoretical discharge from the venturi meter theoretical discharge is equal to a2 v2 now we got the value of v2 it will be like a1 a2 
by root a1 square minus a2 square multiply by root 2gh so we have got the theoretical discharge value now what is the actual discharge value always this actual discharge value will be less than the theoretical discharge value due to the losses or different configuration ad losses etc so actual discharge will be multiplication of coefficient of discharge and theoretical discharge so q actual is equal to cd multiply by theoretical discharge so q act is equal to cd into a1 a2 by root a1 square minus a2 square into root 2 gh cd is the coefficient of discharge it is always less than 1 normally it is used as 0.98 or 0.99 so we have used this venturi meter in horizontal flow pipe but what if if the pipe is located at some inclined level or it vertical so based on that venturi meter is classified into three types one is horizontal venturi meter see this diagram of horizontal venturi meter it is used in horizontal pipe this flow meter or this venturi meter is widely used in different industry as it is mounted in horizontal pipe it is called horizontal venturi meter kinetic energy is very high as it flows horizontally look at this inclined pipe here the venturi meter is inclined and this venturi meter is called inclined venturi meter this velocity within this inclined venturi meter is moderate it will more than horizontal but less than vertical type moderate velocity incurs moderate kinetic and potential energy and see this is a vertical venturi meter it is mounted in a vertical pipe so to derive the venturi meter equations we have used differential pressure head but do you know how to measure the value of differential pressure head from manometer let's see some applications we can measure the flow rate in any fluid in a pipe even applicable for large diameter the flow rate of suspended solids gases slurries dirty liquids can also be measured calculating chemical dosing rate wastewater treatment flow measuring rate flow rate measurement in carburetor and it is applicable for medical applications as well it is used to measure the flow rate of blood in arteries materials of a venturi meter there are different types of materials are used for venturi meter like cast iron cast steel stainless steel mild steel bronze there are various advantages no moving parts simple operation long term reliability low head or energy loss high pressure recovery it is around 90% suitable for very high flow rarely affected by upstream turbulence normally no erosion no clogging self cleaning high coefficient of discharge it can be used in vertical horizontal as well as inclined high accuracy suitable for liquid consisting of gas solids used for a compressible and incompressible fluid as well there are many disadvantages of venturi meter very high installation cost maximum capacity to the minimum capacity is poor bulk and space constraints long length requirements venturi meters are not suitable for small diameters uh, roughly it is not used below 76 mm limitation of the lower reynolds number like 150000 less experimental data are comparative to other orifice plate cavitation may occur in case of slide design issues thank you so much please visit mixstudies.com